Hello everyone, my name is Anatol Litaev and I am founder of Migronis, a company that helps to obtain citizenship by investment. Today I am in Antigua, one of the countries that offers citizenship by investment programs. In one of my recent videos I asked my followers if they would like to see more content with our clients and explore the concept of second citizenship and immigration through their stories. After that I received a huge number of Instagram direct messages and comments that said yeah we do want such videos. Go for it, Anatoly! Though such videos with our clients aren't that easy to make, because not everyone is willing to share such intimate details of their personal lives as a second passport. However, today is one of those days when my client did agree to share his story. He obtained citizenship in Antigua, his name is Bola, and he is from Nigeria. Getting citizenship and this passport is a ticket to a borderless world for him. Also, in this video I would like to tell you about the island itself, because there are a lot of people who, even after obtaining second citizenship, don't plan on visiting the islands. So maybe this video will show people who already have a second passport, or even those who only think about that option, that it's fully worth coming to their new second home. In this video, you will see a client's story and a general overview of Antigua. Let's go! Hey, Balagin. How are you doing out here? Good. That is not your first time in Antigua. No, I've been to Antigua uh, some four years ago. How was it? Oh, it was beautiful. We were uh, on a sea cruise. We are uh, cruising from the you know, southern part of America all the way through Puerto Rico and then into Antigua. And Puerto Rico as well. It was a long trip. It was a long trip. It was a very long two, trip. Two weeks now? About two weeks, yeah. And uh, what is your favorite island, actually? Antigua, interestingly. I really like it here, yeah. What do you like the most here? Well, Antigua, traditionally, it's a really African. Uh, as you know, back to history, the slave trade came from Africa and settled mm -hmm. within here on the way to America. So I see the people, the culture, the clean beaches, um, the very free lifestyle, very simple, easy lifestyle. Ah. So, what does the Antigua and Barbuda look like? It's a small country in the Caribbean Sea. The population of Antigua and Barbuda is around 100,000 people, and 99.5% of which live in Antigua. The population of the second island, Barbuda, is only a few hundred people, let's say not more than 500. There used to be more than 2,000 people living on that island, but after the Irma hurricane destroyed almost everything, most of them had to move to Antigua. There is an excellent large modern airport here, which was constructed in 2015. It offers direct flights to London, New York, Toronto, Miami and a few more destinations. By the way, when I arrived at that airport, I was pleasantly surprised by a Caribbean musician in a bright outfit singing Bob Marley's songs. The moment you exit the airport, you can already feel the chilled atmosphere around you. That's very nice, Antigua. The island can be roughly divided into two parts. The first one is the marvelous coastal area with the bays, lagoons, pure white sand, marinas and the gated communities that will only let you in if you have a special permit. For example, we found one of those on the coast of Half Moon Bay. It's a beautiful coastline with the sandy beaches and you may only visit it if you have a special pass. However, east from here there is a very interesting place called Nonsuch Bay. 
It's a small closed village as well, where you can buy a piece of land or a villa, or you can just easily stay at the resort where you will never have to worry about the privacy. The property prices on this island can vary from five to seven thousand dollars and up to 20 million. The other part is the center of the island. This is where most locals live and enjoy their typical Caribbean lifestyle. Houses there are mostly built on stilts, some of them not even having a foundation. They just scattered around the streets with no numbers assigned to them. I have no clue how they receive their post, but they really are not even numbered. Also, you can find abandoned cars near almost every second house. Looks like it's some sort of tradition. The only time you'll see an expert tourist here is when they're just driving by as there is no reason to spend time in the center part of the island. There is also Long Island, which is a private island with a couple of dozens of houses and the hotels. You can only get access there if you own a property or are staying in the hotel. What was your uh, business in Nigeria? I worked for uh, Shell International. I spent two and a half decades with Shell, nearly two and a half decades. I uh, retired as a uh, um, senior principal uh, uh, procurement uh, uh, strategist. Why did Bola come here? The first reason is that he and his family have a tradition of gathering together in a particular location in this planet. It's a mandatory event that occurs once a year. Being present during one of these gatherings was really interesting for me. Bola invited me to their family dinner where they discussed a few matters for the last year and plan for the next one. So all of, all of your um, the children uh, left Nigeria and went to the uh, United Kingdom? Yeah. It was for study, yeah? Yeah, for study, for now study, work and uh, living, you know? Some of them came back. Yeah, a couple came back and uh, they work in uh, very senior positions in different organizations. Yeah. And uh, you Thanks didn't have them. any intention to, um, to immigrate to the United Kingdom too? Nah, no, huh? no. Nah. I, cannot, I cannot leave my country. Nigeria is so dear to my heart because uh, the country has been wonderful, has been great to me, and I have to give back. And my purpose of any country I belong to, the same way I'm going to give back to Antigua because they've been nice to me. Uh, you give back to a country who has helped you in your journey. Okay, Nigeria uh, gave me quality education, you gave me good moral upbringing, uh, taught me the uh, opportunity to learn as a community and to support each other. So that is one value that I've learned. For me, the most exciting thing in Bola's story is that he more than 60 years old, very active and travels quite a lot. It's the main reason he obtained an Antigua passport. Now he can turn his philosophy of being a world citizen into reality and travel wherever he wants without ever needing a visa. And still, it doesn't affect his patriotic stance at all. Bola loves his country and doesn't plan on moving anywhere. Moreover, his mindset right now is focused on giving everything to his country. He's very grateful for the education education received there and for the opportunities it gave him in general. His nation is the reason he became who is now. I'm saying that initially they thought that the requirement to stay here for the five days was a bother, but when they actually came to, <laughs> to um, spend the five days and to swear their oath, they realized how beautiful the country is how many opportunities there are for additional investments in the country and a few of them have actually bought summer homes here. After? Yes. So say the native first and after they bought some real estate? Yes, correct. 
and so you find that they come here frequently for holidays or some of them have actually migrated here. Not a large number, but a few of them have actually migrated to Antigua and have really called Antigua and Barbuda their home. So did you use it already? Oh yeah, I've used it uh, several places, yeah. How was it? Uh -huh. Smooth and easy. Smooth and easy? Yeah. It's uh, Where have you been with the passport? Which I've been uh, uh, to Portugal, France, United Kingdom. So, hey, all they say to me is we're welcome. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, did they ask something, uh, like some documents needed? No, no, no. Additional ones? It's just simply, how long are you going to be um, here for? What are you doing? And uh, yeah, I'm here for a holiday, one or two days. Hey, Stam, bang, bang. You're gone. <laughs> Despite being a very beautiful place, and people couldn't be called a purely residential location. There are only a few areas inhabited by expats. The expats residing here are mostly involved in a property business, citizenship investment, offshore business, or offer legal services. I moved here um, in 2009. So Nadia had her business, uh, Luxury Locations, and um, I was running a business uh, doing consultancy in the UK. We met and um, Nadia came to the UK. It was winter, um, we both got flu. And then um, I came to Antigua a week later and then I was like, well, if we're gonna move anywhere, I should move here. Antigua, you will often hear people say we have 365 beaches which I think sometimes people don't necessarily kind of click onto because it seems like a catchphrase. But actually, if you take a boat down the West Coast, we do have literally hundreds of pure white sand beaches. If you go to St. Kitts, then their beaches are nothing like. In lots of respects, I think growing up in the Caribbean, um, it's a very outdoor life. In comparison to, I suppose, the UK and the States where I think things are much more indoors and it's much more online, iPads, tech, com computers. It, the, the advantage with, with Antigua and the Caribbean is, you know, this is it, you know. It's nice, you wanna go to the beach, you wanna go swimming, you wanna go diving, you wanna go sailing. It's great weather all the time, you can go hiking. For the most part, people come here as a tourist. A huge number of them come to participate in yachting events. By the way, today we can see four crew liners docked from the cruise port. These are the most profitable and prosperous days for the locals because it's when the much-loved American tourists come ready to fill the local pockets with the precious dollar. I guess these are the most anticipated days for the all the restaurants and the taxi drivers. I think that every one of those liners can accommodate from 1,500 to 2,000 people. Just imagine around 7,000 people visiting the island at once, with the local population being just 80 or 90,000 people. It is almost as much as 10% of the local population, and that is definitely the biggest economic driving force in Antigua. It is safe to say that this island is a tourist-dependent one, and that is probably not the most ideal place for expats to live permanently. This is a St. John's, the central district of Antigua's capital. There are just a few banks, a supermarket, a rather beautiful old church over there, a hospital, and a small, well-maintained block along the port where the cruise ships are located. And actually, that is pretty it.
Our next topic is the property prices in Antigua. I'm going to speak only about the coastal area of the island where the experts buy their property, not the center part inhabited by the locals. The price for the cheapest decent house starts from four, five hundred thousand dollars. It will be most likely a really small house with around 200 square meters of space, with a rather not bad plan design and old-fashioned style. Even if the building itself is new, it was probably built with the maximum simplicity in both form and function. But starting with the 1.5 million dollars, you'll be able to buy something good enough, but it would take between 3 and 5 million dollars to afford a properly built and designed house. So Antigua isn't a cheap resort at all. The property prices here are on the same level as Miami, I guess sometimes even higher. Speaking about the property options, I would really like to mention the Tamarin Hills project. It took part in the Citizenship by Investment program and at the moment it's fully completed. I actually believe all the properties have already been sold as well. It is one of the best examples of combining modern and Caribbean styles. And it's always great to see the place that you come over and over again change. Or, as it happens, sometimes you don't see the changes at all. And as I come here every single year, I always can see some small changes and they are always positive. The country is truly transforming for the better. Wow, this is surreal. It's like red light district, I don't know. And we are not even inside the city. There are no houses and the only beach nearby. Do you have any theory why the rides are red? Stay tuned, we'll get the answer soon. At least I hope so. I have to get this answer definitely. Hey, Captain. Captain George. How's it going? I am a okay. How are you guys doing, man? Good. Welcome to paradise. This is Long Island, located around just 500 meters from Antigua, and that is private island with no access by ferry or car. Access here is for just residents only. This is my buddy, Natalie. So this is known as Jumbi Bay or Long Island. This is 1.9 kilometers in length and it's 300 acres. If you want to rent the units, there's a resort. You can rent the unit from the resort or you can rent the private villas. The private villas are something like 22,000, whereas the resort might be just about 1,000. Big difference. So a room over here, they have 28 bungalows. And our night stay over here is like uh, 2100 to 10,000 night. The private villas are like 22,000 different prices. Different people rent their villas for different prices. Plenty of celebrities live here, but you can also rent a villa for $20,000 per night, or you can rent a hotel apartment for $1,000 per night, and this is a really marvelous place. Well, as I said, Robin Leach was one of the first persons to own a home over here for him at the end here. The guy that holds the show Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. Gucci and Gabbana also has a home over here. It's also said that Oprah Winfrey has a home over here, but that home was bought by someone and they, just, they broke it down to the foundation and they're going to build whatever they want. That's how the money rolls. <laughs> They do not like paparazzi because they're here on vacation. Some of them do not want to be filmed or taken in pictures. And pictures are worth a lot of money. And some of these celebrities sell it on the black market. You can make a lot of money or you can probably... Some people try to blackmail some of the celebrities when they come over here. They 
staff and the guests, they do not travel on the same ferry. They have their own boats that bring them over to the island. Yep, so the staff docks on the other side of the island, which is the east side of the island, and then the guests dock on this side, which is the west side of the island. Two different boats, two different docking stations. When you're working here as a staff, you have to sign papers, say whatever you see here, you cannot speak about on this island. Pardon me? Sign taxi. If I signed, I've never worked on the island. Yes, I can tell anything and everything that I know about it, whether it be um, factual or sometimes you get a little hearsay there and there. So not everything that you hear, it is fact. Do you remember the day when you made a decision uh, uh, to, to have a second passport? Look, this is interesting because many, many years ago, I had opportunities to have several countries' passports. I had lived in the UK, I lived in the United States. I and could have opportunity to get a UK I passport. Could, I had all the opportunities, but because I was so uh, um, stubborn, one word, and uh, very insistent, on living in my country, on living in Nigeria, I was not interested in any other country. Uh, even though my family had, I just wanted to go back and support and move back, okay? So all those opportunities passed by. And um, later on, a friend of mine said to me, maybe you want to consider this. Because you see, when you're in service, when you're working, it's pretty easy to get visa. You want to travel because Everything, most of the time, the company will do for you, okay? But when you leave service, you have to prove every time, especially if you are retired or if you are doing your own private business. Is it hard to get a visa in Nigeria? If you have good history, like I do, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. I will always get visa to any country I want to because I've, I have built a very great foundation over the last, I have been traveling over the last, 50 years. But if you use expired, you can uh, buy a ticket and go right away next day, for example. You need to yeah. maintain it. Well, it takes you time. You have yeah, to yeah. plan, you have to... And if you forget they, about it, so it's you can a problem. miss something. There. Absolutely. So, the ability to have flexibility is the name of the game. You don't have to go and queue up, you don't have to... Uh, uh, listen, it's like if I give you... If I bring breakfast to your bed, it's easy to eat than you get up and go to breakfast because you have to brush, you have to wear your clothes. Then you might decide to be in your bedroom and you don't want to brush and then you just have nice your example. papers. <laughs> so so it's, when you get something given to you, it makes your life easier. So for me, this is about flexibility. Because I'm a global citizen, I can decide to wake up and go anywhere. And listen, we're talking about blockchain technology. That is going to make the world faster 10 times than it used to be. Probably a lot more. And for that reason, you want to be able to get up and go. And now just a couple of seconds of advertising. My company assists wealthy clients to get a second citizenship and residency by investment in more than 15 countries. And how was the process? So it was hard for you? The process was pretty simple. Um, I had a team who were very helpful. Uh, they took the documents, they assess your candidacy, uh, they look at the qualification criteria, and they found out that you satisfy the criteria. They ask questions, I give documents, they check, they do the background check, and did every check, it was okay. I was in six months, it was all done. So quite efficient, I'm very, very pleased with the team. And uh, do you remember uh, who you worked with? Um, quite a couple of people, but I think one name that stuck in my head is a lady called Alena. Alena, um, I like her, I like her a lot because if I send a message, Alena, what is this? Or what can I do here? It doesn't matter the time. Within an hour, I get a response. Maybe, and for it, was, me, maybe it was a robot. <laughs> it was a robot. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, that is good. That is good. Someone who is always there to provide you with answers. Is 
Actually, there are more interesting stories from my clients coming soon, and some of them just recently have obtained Caribbean passports. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and if you like our videos, make sure to turn on the notifications and press the like button, and if you have some questions, just leave a comment. So let's keep going. What is approximate uh, processing time? Okay, well, um, right now we're at about three and a half months, mm -hmm. and by the end of the first quarter, we're going to get it to about ten weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. So we've we've implemented a number of different processes and um, streamlined how we've done things. We're now um, utilizing an application, an electronic. Uh, software that we will allow the agents to actually file electronically. Um, in addition to the, um, the manual submission, they'll be able to send the, the documents electronically that we can start working on them. So a number of initiatives we put in place towards the end of last year should be a fruit this year. So one of the main reasons why Antigua is so popular as a second home location is the number of celebrities that own property here. The island is generally popular among Americans, a bit fewer Canadians and British. Around the island, in all obviously all islands have similar, but um, there's certain sort of pockets. So for example, English Harbour, where we are now, there's a lot of visitors that come here. Some stay year-round. It's probably not the largest year-round community, simply because in uh, the high season, we get a huge amount of boats. We get these super yachts uh, and mega yachts here. So in English Harbour, the population tends to fluctuate more. Jolly Harbour, which is in the middle of the West Coast, probably has the, the largest all-around sort of round year permanent population. And then obviously in the season it goes up and down, but uh, in that area there's a lot of hotels, there's, there's, a, there's quite a lot to do. But you don't need to um, go to St. John's, just to arrive. And... To be honest, actually it's quite interesting because when people have never come to Antigua, they always think, right, I need to go to the capital, St. John's. Um, if you talk to most people who live in English Harbour, and you talk to most people who live in Jolly Harbour, they probably go to St. John's maybe two or three times a year. Uh, mainly for Christmas presents and Valentines and that sort of thing. And now is the time to get back to our Antiguan red lights. Preservation is very important to the survival of a lot of species of animals. Yeah. I became a director of Antigua, so I, we have a non-profit organization. It's called ABC Turtles. Whenever any turtles come upon the island on the different beaches, the hotels, the security, they will call us and we will go out and make sure all these turtles are nesting safely. Whereas we have about five different types of turtles that come to the island. We have mainly the biggest turtle, it is called the leatherback sea turtles. Woo! Massive turtle and almost half the size of the boat in front there. I can show you some pictures. The red lights are there for making sure that the turtles are not attracted by light pollution and crossing the road. So the turtles cannot see the red spectrum of light. So if they stay on the sandy side, they lay their eggs, and then they head back out, look on the horizon for the faint light, and they head out into the ocean. It's just a couple streets they have put them on, mainly where a lot of the sea turtle activity is found. Like down at Darkwood Beach, um, Marina Bay, um, Hodges Bay as well too. So would you say that the red lights are mainly for the turtles? Yep, just for the turtles. What the kind of got? Uh... So that is the explanation of Antigua Red Light Street. And here is the turtle crossing sign itself. So we have, in general, the sort of, I suppose, because I live in Jolly Harbour, in general, it's uh, North American and UK. It's permanent uh, residence. It's, yeah, I mean, generally permanent residence, because obviously being a permanent resident, um, you're not here on holiday because we're working a lot of the time, so you tend not to meet the tourists as much as other people might. But yeah, it's an international crowd, um, but obviously there's a lot of Antiguans uh, who live in Jolly Harbour as well.
We have been filming from the early morning and today we weren't so lucky. Two wheels have broken in our car and our camera washed in the ocean waves. Watch the water on your, on your camera, okay? Careful with the water. Honestly speaking, none of this matters now, because right now I'm going to eat some shawarma in the red light street and nothing can stop me. I like your shawarma. What was it? Chicken or lamb you had? Lamb, lamb. It was lamb. Lamb. Okay. Okay. With hot sauce or no hot sauce? Not hot sauce. Okay. Two coke. And what, what else should I try? Some salads, no? Uh, we don't have salad at the moment. On the side, no? no fries only. Fries only. Okay, yeah. just one fries. Okay. Let me tell you a few things about Antigua cuisine while I'm waiting for my magic shawarma. The first thing I want to tell you is that the food here is very expensive in both restaurants and supermarkets. For example, the average cost for dinner for two here is between 150 and 180 dollars. It could include main dishes like steak, lobster or freshly caught fish, with a salad or a soup and a few non-alcoholic drinks. So again, the average price for dinner for a single person in a restaurant is around $70. The next thing is that the local cuisine in Antigua is the exact copy of American cuisine. That means steaks, some seafood and the immense quantity of junk food. Also, chicken dishes are really popular here. There is only one single fast food chain restaurant in an island. Can you guess which one it is? Yes, you are right. That is KFC. Pizza is popular here too, so you can find it almost everywhere. There are also a few Italian restaurants, and I've met whole Italian families that own hotels and restaurants. I've been here before, so that's why I wanted to come here again. I love to visit establishments and eat street foods, not only the proper established restaurants. The parking lot is full of cars because this restaurant also offers takeaway. It's owned by an expat, by the way, and uh, I don't know where he's from, but the food here is really great. This place reminded me of one of the establishments in Portugal, in a town called Setubal, where for 15 or 17 euros, I don't remember exactly, you could get an unlimited number of fish dishes. So all you can eat concept where you can order the pastilbas, the rather sardines, and the five or six more types of fishes. Locally, they are fresh because they just caught from the ocean, 20 meters away from the restaurant. Where is my shawarma? Oh, it looks great. It's the best shawarma I ever had in my life. I can't say that I've had a lot of shawarmas in my life, but this one is definitely the best. In a lot of the larger houses, you've got people who are semi-retired. So they're semi-retired, they're coming here for lifestyle. They might do six months a year in Antigua during the, during the winter, or they are fully retired and they just enjoy living here. And then you've got another section of the market, which I would, as it were, fall into, um, which is effectively servicing those people. So all of that, I'm talking about the two sort of groups of expats. You've got the workers and the non-workers. So I would fit into the worker group. Um, and effectively, you know, we're in the same industries as any other Antiguan people. Um, we're, you know, bringing in, effectively it's tourists, it's tourist based, it might be. So it's like a part of UK, but in Antigua? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's very international. And it is, I mean, and it's not, it's not as if it's a, a, a purely expat community. It's quite a mixed community. Because it's a residential development, you've got a lot of hotels nearby. Because of that, and it's a good harbour, you've got a lot of boat, you've got a lot of excur excursions. So it tends to be um, very, very tourist focused. Whereas if you go to St. John's, 
there's a lot of tourism, but as soon as you move towards the edge of town, there's a lot of law offices, there's a lot more corporate business going on. If you go to the north of the island, um, up in sort of Crosby's and Blue Waters area, it's more corporate Antigua and less tourist. Generally, Jolly Harbour and English Harbour tend to be very, very dominated by tourism. I really love the way the houses look here. Even modern houses still retain that Caribbean style. Yeah, this is what we talk about, war citizenship. Gives you an opportunity to see what ordinarily you normally may not have seen in your own domain. When you belong to an opportunity that grants you access to everywhere in the world, you can only be one thing, the global citizen. Enjoy life. <laughs> Yeah, the first one is that Antigua is exclusively a premium beach destination. You don't come to Antigua to explore the city like you would do in, let's say, Venice or London or Amsterdam or even some small Spanish or French villages. So, in order to not to spoil the impressions about these islands, you shouldn't waste time exploring the capital city of St. John's, so just go to the beautiful base right away, and even better idea is to rent a catamaran or a large boat and spend a few nights sailing the sea. The second conclusion is that Antigua offers citizenship by investment program, and you can see the information right now on your screen detailing the prices for a single applicant and a family of four. There are two options available. Either contribute to the National Development Fund or acquire a property. The whole process will take around six, eight, sometimes nine months, and no need to go anywhere to apply. As a licensed agent like my Gronis, will do everything for you. As you can see in this video, there are plenty of activities and opportunities so you can happily spend those five required days after you obtain a passport here. The third conclusion is that Antigua is not a cheap destination at all. A night in a mid-level hotel would cost you at least $500, in a decent luxury hotel from $800 and more. There are also tons of options to rent catamarans, yachts or villa in a private island, so obviously all that costs a fortune too. But on the other hand, the islands offer you a lot of different ways to enjoy your time, and the views here are spectacular. A single taxi ride would cost you $25-$40 on average, or $25 per hour. Be prepared, there is no Uber here. Dinner for two in a not bad restaurant would probably be around $140-$150. In a really good one, start from $180 and more. Renting a small board costs around $300-$400 for two hours. The next conclusion is that Antigua is not a place for expats like Spain or Portugal, where people obtain residency mainly to move there. Antigua is actually more about tourism or second, third, fourth, or even fifth vacation home. People usually get an Antigua passport to get more freedom and opportunities not to move here. At my I have encountered many such cases, and uh, not only regarding Antigua, but also in other Caribbean countries. In 2022, there will be more videos about St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Grenade, and client stories to obtain citizenship there. Also, I will most probably visit my second home, which is Guanajuato State. So this is pretty much it, my friends. I hope the video was useful for you. If so, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. Who knows, maybe some of you will want to visit Antigua. In that case, I really hope that my video could help guide you through the island and maybe some of you could even think about getting an Antigua passport. If you are interested in that passport, feel free to text me on Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever else. And that's it. See you in the next videos, goodbye, 
and see you in Portugal.